Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk of some real uh, primary information that we need to think about when we talk about uh, cells and cell biology and that's the story of scale. Now obviously we all learnt scale in some form through our lives and uh, at school and all sorts of things but when you come to looking at specimens and things in, in biology you need to take scale very carefully. Scale really means the size of things and uh, the size of things can vary dramatically and when you want to take into account size you need to think about you know uh, measurements that come in meters because remember you know we have a human body which is one to two meters tall we have to talk in millimeters because in millimeters we talk uh, about things like the diameter of hairs and all sorts of things like that then we talk about micrometers and micrometers are one one thousandth of a millimeter and a micrometer is the probably the one we'll most commonly use in biology because that's the one we talk about when we talk about the size of cells you know the average red blood cells about seven or eight micrometers in diameter so that's thousandths of a millimeter and when we talk about thousandths of a millimeter what I always do is I always think about a pen if you look at the sharp end of a biro and it's got that ball on the end you can look at that ball and you can go well that ball is about one millimeter across and if it's one millimeter across that means it's a thousand micrometers across and so that's the end of a pen and for me that's the sort of quick measure that gives me an idea of scale and if you think about it in those terms you can say to yourself well how many red blood cells would fit across the sharp end of a biro so if we said that each red blood cell was about eight micrometers across what does that mean? Well, it means we could probably fit, you know, to get into a thousand, we could fit, let's, let's say this is 10 for the sake of the quick argument, uh, you know, there's 10 per hundred, so we've got a hundred, so there must be about a hundred and twenty red blood cells we could line up across the t sharp end of a biro. And then we go to even smaller numbers and I'm going to miss a few out here but I'm going to go to the ones that you commonly see the next common one is called a nanometer and a nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters so that means it's 0 0.00000000001 meters it's a very small number and that measurement we use to measure the um, size of atoms and molecules in. So these are the common sizes that we use when we're measuring scale. So let's move on and look at a typical histological picture and talk about what scales we can see in this picture. Now this picture, and we'll learn later how to identify it, but it's been taken with a light microscope and what we can see in this picture is a bundle of nuclei see these little dark spots here these are the nuclei of some cells in a tissue and then we can see this sort of pink looking material that sort of surrounds these nuclei all this sort of amorphous pink looking stuff and the thing, you know, a couple of really interesting things you can see. See how some of these nuclei, look at these ones down here. Some of them are much darker than others and some have different shapes and things. But these are all nuclei. And uh, so the first thing you do when you look at a histological specimen like this is not to try and identify it or not to try and work out what you're looking at. Is actually try and work out what scale you're looking at. And in this case you can easily tell because what you need to keep in your mind is that a nucleus 
in most common cells, you know, garden house cells now, it does vary between cells, but in most common cells, you can sort of say is about one to two micrometers in diameter. Now, you know, please, that's not true for all cells. We have some huge nuclei, we have some tiny nuclei, but on the whole, they're about one or two micrometers in diameter, which means they are about one to two one thousandths of a millimeter in diameter. So you can use that like a little ruler now, and you can see these little nuclei here, and you can measure using those on scale. Now I want to point out that this picture is actually not the best of histological pictures because the common thing that you see on pictures and you should look for is what we call a scale bar. And it's usually printed down in the right corner here and it usually has a little line like this and underneath the line it'll say something like uh, 100 micrometers and when you look at a histological picture or any picture make sure you immediately hunt for the scale bar because that is where the person who took the photo is telling you what the relative scale of this photo is. Now you're probably sitting there thinking well this is a complete waste of time because you know I just look at that and I just know it sells. Well I want to show you a couple of examples now where if you don't see a scale bar and you don't know what you're looking at, you can get into deep trouble. So here's an example. This is a fantastic photograph. It's a photograph that uh, any of you who are interested in, in science and things may well have seen before and some of you probably know the trick that I'm going to play upon you. Let's look at this, si look at this picture and decide what the size of things is here. Now the first thing to notice is there's no scale bar, so you can't tell. And since we've been looking at cells, what we would probably do is we'd go, oh look, yes, here's this dark spot here, this is a nucleus, so we'll say this is one to two micrometers in diameter. Well, guess what? This is a photograph of the surface of Jupiter, taken from a satellite, and this distance here is four times the diameter of the Earth. So please, you've got no scale bar here, so you can't tell, you can't just look at things and go, okay, that's this sort of scale. And th other sciences take scale very critically, and we should also be very critical when we're looking at photos and looking for scale. For example, this next photograph, some of you will know, this photograph is actually the surface of Mars and this is the Curiosity rover currently on the surface of Mars taking photographs. But I don't want you to look at the interesting surface of Mars and the geology of that. What I want you to look at is these little symbols sitting here. Look at that one there, that one there, and this one here, and then there's another one down here, and in fact there's two more here. Look at them all over this thing. It's like they've stuck stickers all over this Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars. Oh, and you can see there's another one, just a little bit of one down here. Well, the reason they've put those, those different uh, images on the surface of the Curiosity rover is quite simple. They know, the people responsible for this, know because before they launched this to Mars, they measured the distance between each of these symbols in three dimensions. So not only do they know it in perfect length, but they know it in three dimensions, the precise length of these distances. And that's just like you knowing the size of a um, red blood cell or a common nucleus or something like that. These people know the distance here, so therefore they can use maths to translate it to calculate distances like this. So they can calculate, knowing this l length here, what this length here will be in these photographs, which is a really neat way of keeping scale. And I've got one more photograph to show you to make you have a good think about scale. 
This photograph here is an astonishing photograph. Well, the first thing you notice is that you can't see any scale. So you don't know what this is a photograph of. This could be a satellite photograph of the mountains on the surface of Mercury. It could be the photographs of the moles on the surface of my skin. It could be anything. But it's not any of those. In fact, it's a really neat photograph that's a very taken with a very special microscope. And what you're actually looking at is individual atoms on a silicon surface. And you can tell who made this photograph. Just line up, they've lined these atoms up. Look at this. Actually, I'll get a darker colour to do this. Look at this. Draw some lines through these. And you can see who actually took this photograph. This photograph was taken by IBM. And in fact, this is using a very special microscope where you can actually look at individual atoms. So the distance across these distances here are measured. Well, in fact, these are under nanometers. But well, let's just say for now, for the sake of the argument, these are measured in nanometers because you are looking at molecules, atoms. And in fact, remember that a, a nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters. So this is a very small photograph. In fact, this is a really neat microscope because this is not only a microscope, but this is also has the ability to move atoms around. So you can have a joystick and you can push the atoms around on the surfaces. And that's how they've written IBM in this picture. And I have a very last one to show you, which is a completely different photograph altogether. And this is an image taken with another sort of microscope to actually show you the surface structure of something small. Again, this has no scale bar, so you're in trouble. You don't know whether this is a satellite photograph taken with my mobile phone of the surface of my skin or something else. In fact, this, these are these red things are the projections that makes the surface of your tongue feel rough. These are the little papillae that stick out on the surface of your tongue. And this is taken with what we call a scanning, a scanning electron microscope. And they take photographs of the surface of tissues at relatively high magnification. And you will have seen these sorts of photographs, you know, the eyes of flies and things. That's how these photographs are taken. And this has been color enhanced with a computer. So please, the, the pictures that come out of these uh, microscopes are not in color. The, this has been computer enhanced color. But you're actually seeing the surface tissues of the surface of the tongue. So that's uh, another way that we can look at tissues. So that's where I'm going to stop in this short session on scale. Please remember, scale is a really important thing and you need to consider it very carefully. I'll just roll back here for a moment and remind you that uh, certainly you need to understand these measures and some of the ones in between as well. And you need to be able to convert them. Remember, a millimeter is one tenth of a centimeter. Remember that. And a centimeter, uh, and a meter, there is a hundred centimeters in a meter. You need to know how to convert between these scales to be a good understander of biology. Thank you.